everyone, it's Raina. So this video is for those who have their sun in the seventh house in their natal chart. And this is a placement that has a sub-influence of Libra because Libra rules this house. So I don't care what your sun sign is. You are going to be relationship oriented. And I would say that if your sun is in a more solitary sign. Hmm, what's a more solitary sign? I don't know, a, a sign that can easily be alone, that's very self-sufficient. We could say Aquarius or even Scorpio. Then you are still going to crave that kind of one-on-one -on -one committed relationship. By the way, I have used two websites, which I highly recommend to kind of amass a list of characteristics. One of them is codexastrology.com and the other one is called theastrologyplace.com. So I want to give credit where it's due. And um, so this kind of person, you know, I would say that relationships are very, very important to you. And, you know, like we think of the sun as our aspirational self and, you know, what we aspire to be, become, you know, as we progress in life. And with you, it's really on the personal level where you want that very um, exclusive relationship with another person. Now, it doesn't just have to be romantic partners because this can also go along with anything related to like clients and so one-on-one -on -one relationships with clients, but also business partners, you actually find luck when you team up with somebody. You might actually be adverse to having your own business all by your lonesome, and you want to kind of bounce ideas off of another person and have that sense that it's not just you doing things. As a matter of fact, um, you're the kind of person that, you know, for whom loneliness can be a real thing. And again, you know, regardless of what your sun sign is in, you might just find that there, you know, if you always are listening to your sun sign attributes, you, you might say to yourself, but I'm supposed to be so independent. Why do I feel like I always want to be in a relationship? If you're a male and, you know, we have to, I, I, I have to like add the caveat that I don't really know if this would apply to same sex relationships. I would assume it would because masculine and feminine energy are not um, necessarily connected to gender. So, uh, but it's kind of weird because, um, you know, the sun relates to the male energy. Um, so for, for women, this can even be like the father, the son can be the father, but I'll get to that in a minute. If you're a male, um, your partner may be somebody who is of a higher class than you. Um, it almost reminds me of Venus and Capricorn of like seeking some, someone of a higher status. And the other thing too, is that you may give away your power to this person, um, you may, I will, well, I don't know, maybe that's a little bit much. You just may defer to them and they may have, I, I guess you could call it the upper hand in the relationship, but you are kind of like, um, allowing them to take the lead and you're happy with that. It's, you're proud of your partner. You know, the sun equals pride. Your self-esteem is tied to relationships. And this is true for either genders, um, either gender. Um, you, because the sun represents your ego. And when you have the sun in the seventh house, being in a relationship says to you that you're okay. And this is problematic because you could be one of those people especially if your son is afflicted and you have a tendency to attract relationships that aren't so hot, that um, 
you go from one relationship to the next and you don't even take a, um, a breather, you know, you don't even <laughs> exhale. You just go right to the next one. And because of that sense of loneliness being very, um, prevalent and, and, um, you know, one thing I want to state about this is that this is natural. This is how you were wired, at least in this lifetime. So it's not to say there's something wrong with you because you feel like this, but you can modify this. That's the point. It's always going to probably be your impulse, but you can, um, kind of stop it in its tracks by seeing this habitual pattern and this thought pattern, um, and doing something about it and kind of like saying, okay, um, I just split up with this, with my spouse and I'm feeling very vulnerable and I really want to go right into a new relationship and just kind of like find whoever's out there. But I'm going, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to call up my best friend because you know what? I've been, um, neglecting her or him and I'm going to spend more time with them. So you're still, tr you know, being social, but you don't have to go into a, another dysfunctional relationship. If you're a woman, your partner, and you're heterosexual, obviously, but who knows, maybe this has nothing, I, maybe I'm overthinking this. Um, you know, what I got from, um, I believe it was Codex. If you're a woman, your partner will resemble your father. So <laughs> if you're in a same sex relationship, I'm just going to leave that right there. Um, because I have no idea what to make of that, but you know, when we say resemble, I might've actually put the word resemble, but you're looking for somebody that does remind you of him. So it does, maybe it isn't physical. Maybe it's some type of, um, trait that they, that they have personality type. If your father, is very extroverted. You might seek somebody like that. Um, and, and that just, it's just like your type, you know, so to speak, but there could be like a father. I mean, I'm, I'm adding this myself. I think there could be like a, a daddy complex where you, um, and I would say, especially if it was a male, because it's so easy to project onto a male, uh, onto, um, somebody that really resembles, that person and, and just kind of like expecting your partner to be everything that, that, that your father wasn't, if you had, um, a not so great relationship with your father. Now the astrology place website said something really fascinating. And I think really get, you know, gets to the crux of the sign of Libra but also people who have the sun in the seventh house, because there's going to be that kind of Libra influence. And they said that, that the seventh house sun is about giving away one's power to others. And, you know, there's a projection there, um, where you are, because you're on in this one-on-one -on -one relationship and, the whole idea is that, um, when we are dealing with people one-on-one, -on -one, and this certainly does not have to be just your significant other, this could be your boss and you see certain things that are reminiscent, let's say of one of your parents and you become reactive and you project those qualities onto that person. That's a seventh house situation. And I never really thought about it that way. But that's exactly what can happen. And this is sometimes why I think um, it is about giving away your own power because you really believe that you need this other person in order to make you be um, significant in your own right. In other words, you feel incomplete. That's how I interpret this if you're not with another person. And again, it doesn't have to be just one type of relationship. I mean, I could even see this being a parent child relationship where you, um, especially, I would say, especially if you're like a Scorpio or a Taurus individual, and maybe especially a mother, because 
you know, a woman or a mother, because, um, these types of, you know, because women are usually the ones that are, are having children. And, um, I mean, <laughs> women are usually the ones having children. I mean, raising them primarily. I, I'm just, see, I'm, I don't have, uh, I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. So that's why, that's why I'm rambling like this. Oh my goodness. But yeah, um, you, you know, you have to be careful nowadays because, um, you're going to get people that are going to tell you that, that, uh, women aren't the only ones who can give birth. So, um, but, but yeah, I mean, if you're one of those signs, cause I think of Taurus and Scorpio as being rather possessive of, or maybe even Leo. It's funny that they're all fixed signs too. So fixating, obsessed on their relationship with their child, they can really have problems when the child becomes a teenager. So because, um, they lose that identity and that identity was everything to them. And because they have a tendency towards possessiveness, that's when they can turn on the child and become more um, destructive and try to perhaps um, whittle away the child's self-esteem so they don't feel like autonomous or be become extra strict and impose a bunch of um, bogus rules just because they, they want to keep that child all to themselves. So... Um, yeah, you know, this, don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying this would happen to all people of those signs. I'm just saying that that is one of the things that I could think of about when you tie your self-esteem to a, a relationship with somebody, even a friendship, you know, um, you really rely on a friend and then they develop other friends and you just get like extremely jealous about it. One thing that I didn't see mentioned here, which I find kind of odd. Now, I only looked at two sites, so probably if I kept going, I'd find it. But I would say that you're the type of person who likes to keep the peace, just like a Libra individual is wont to do. And so I think that you're kind of like a natural mediator. Um, this can even be professionally the type of work you go into, other work that is very good for somebody like you is personal relations, PR, as well as what else did they say? Social work. And because you're very good interacting with people and clients in general, one-on-one -on -one relations with um, relationships with people. So this could definitely um, indicate having your own business. But again, you might go into a partnership Uh, <laughs> sorry for that. I, I'm recording on my phone and I'm probably getting some kind of, um, telemarketer or something, but I have a sitar ringtone. So that's why, uh, you probably heard a little sitar there. Maybe that's a, a sign that you're supposed to go into partnership. Any type of partnership is good for you. I would say too, if you are somebody who is a sun in Scorpio, especially, or any of the, I mean, I guess any of the water signs, but to me, Scorpio is really um, great at digging beneath the surface, psychotherapy and things like that, shadow work, or any of the air signs, which are very analytical. You might be a natural for therapy. I, I mentioned social work, but also just being a psychologist and having your own personal practice. That could certainly be the case. Um, and maybe having a partnership with somebody else. But, but um, there's almost like this thing of you, don't, you not wanting to shine alone, you know, which would be the sun in the first. Uh, you wanting to shine, um, you know, you even like allowing somebody else to shine. That's why they mention um, ha maybe attracting a partner who is the more powerful one in the relationship. So, um, the thing that I would say about this, because I, as I said, they didn't mention anything 
related to being very um, into harmony, the peacemaker, is that I feel like it can work both ways, is that you can seek it out or you can be afraid of anything that smacks of controversy. And you have to, unless maybe you're an Aries and then you have the best of both worlds where you are comfortable with being a bit of a rebel, but you also think of others. Um, I would say that you have to watch out for the tendency to abdicate responsibility for yourself within the realm of relationships, um, not to allow a partner to be dominant. And by the way, if your son is afflicted, you may attract a domineering partner, somebody who their ego is out of control because the son is afflicted. So the negative, the shadow qualities of the son, which is like self-seeking, selfishness, self-absorption. I would say you would attract a narc, a narcissist, a covert narcissist. I mean, an overt narcissist or a malignant narcissist. So you have to, you, if you have um, an afflicted son, in other words, hard angles to your son, um, you must take a special, especially good, um, take caution uh, in who you get involved with because you can give over your power and then you're off to the races with this narc in your life that you don't really want, obviously. Um, let me think about something else I wanted to say. And they didn't talk about anything related to arts, the arts. And I think that they should have because I'm pretty sure. I definitely read that if Venus is in your seventh house, that you're very appreciative of artistic endeavors. So I would say with the sun there that you might even go into a career with music or some other art form. But at the very least, it could have a big place in your life, maybe as a hobby, something that really um, you feel strongly about. You're defi a definite romantic, that's for sure. If Let's talk about different uh, sun, sun signs. If you're an air sign, um, air signs are known for detachment, um, but you definitely have a strong pull in the direction of relationships. And and uh, for instance, a Gemini individual, this may make you more relationship oriented, whereas you may tend to be very adverse to commitment. And this, the, the seventh house is about committed partnership, not just ser uh, dating three people at once. So this is more, this will make you more monogamous. Um, <laughs> I had somebody uh, chewing me out and saying about Gemini and saying, don't, d don't uh, desecrate or whatever Gemini is saying that they're just uh, sluts or something. I forget what they said, said something like that. And, you know, I got a good laugh from it because that's totally not what I meant or said. Um, but there are some signs that from a very early age want to be married, want a partnership. Okay, this brings me to if you're a Taurus, if you're a Cancer, you may get married when you're 18, and I mean legal marriage. You may say, hell no, I'm not going to live with somebody. I want that document. I want proof. Because you A, you might be more traditional, so you want to do things, quote, the right way. And B, you just want, that's a form of security to you, the fact that you have this contract. Whereas a fire sign or an air sign typically looks at that scenario and says, oh my God, I would not want anything to do with that. Well, the air and the fire signs may be more interested in um, having even a legal marriage because they see that as proof that there is a union and they love that idea of the union. So um, that can be very interesting too. If you are an earth sign, um, I mentioned Taurus. Um, 
Virgos and Capricorns, I think, tend to be rather solitary figures. This can make you more relationship-oriented, as well as romantic. You might be quite dry normally, and and in this type of relationship, um, you might even write a poem or two, but, you know, tell your partner, never divulge this to anyone. Well, maybe not a Virgo. Virgos are ruled by Mercury, so they... They like to write, so they might just chalk it up to being a writer or something like that. Um, but I don't think of Capricorns and Virgos as naturally romantic, so this can give you much more of that. If you're a water sign, forget about it. You're just like, you're so in love with the idea of having a significant other in your life that that's all that matters to you. And if, you're, if your son is in Pisces, this makes you super romantic and artistic. Okay, that's what I have for you. I hope that you, you know, saw some things that, that um, you know, resemble how you act. And if you would like me to look at your chart, analyze it, look at some of the astral trends coming up for you in the next 12 months, you can check me out, um, my natal chart interpretation or transits. Um, and I have other readings, too, love readings that, that are natal chart-based and stuff like that, and career readings, uh, life path readings. Okay, uh, my website is rainandmoonastrology.com. The link is below. Take care. Bye.